الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وإلى إحسان وإلى يوم وإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وقال الله جل وعلا في كتابه Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in his noble book, Sad wal Qur'an al-Zikr. Allah Jalla wa Ala, he says, the letter Sad, as he begins with one of the, what we call the huruf al-Hijai, al-huruf al-Muqatta'ah, those separate letters that comes in the beginning of the surah. Allah says, by the Qur'an, للذكر يعني by the Quran للذكر meaning the Quran and the fill of ammunition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in his book والقرآن المجيد that the Quran the Quran Allah جل وعلا book is majid it is majestic so today inshallah ta'ala we want to highlight the importance of friendships of companions Who's the best person or who's the best companion to accompany you in the life of this world? So we're going to talk about Musahabatul Qur'an. We're going to talk about one of the best, if not the best, uh, companion that you can have in this dunya will be the Book of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And what does it mean to be a sahib of the Qur'an? And is it permissible to say that you are a sahib of the Qur'an? Can you utilize this? Can you utilize this terminology? that I am a sahib of Qur'an, that I am a person of the Qur'an. Well, we're going to answer those questions and more, inshallah. Tayyip, to understand that a sadiq al someone that is a true friend, then a true friend is one who's going to aid you, okay, to become better, to help you uh, to advance, to ascend, and to elevate, both in this life and the next. A true friend is one who... It's not just your friend, your friend who's just there to benefit you in this life or to uh, benefit from you, rather. Your friend is the friend who's going to aid you and help you improve in life, okay? Help you advance, but not just this life, the next life as well. And that is important for any Muslim is that we understand that it's not just this life, there is another life. Because we believe in retribution, we believe in resurrection, which is one of the uh, Arakan of Iman, one of the pillars of Iman, that we believe that there will be a consequent or a reward for the actions that we put forth. And if that's the case, then a friend is the one that worry about that. They want to make sure that you're not only good in this life, but you're good in the next life. And what that means is that your friend is not just physical. They're not worrying about just the physical things that you can obtain in life. They're worrying about your spiritual side as well. And this is something that we should take heed in when we're looking for friends or companions. We want to make sure that they're worrying about our acura. They're worrying about a, our spiritual side, which is a part of us as well. You will not find, okay, you will never find, a sahib, a companion that is more virtuous or better than the Noble Quran itself, that will benefit you both in this life and the next, that will benefit you physically as well as spiritually. You're not going to find a friend that is better than that, that is more virtuous than that. It is stated in the hadith and the Nabi sallallahu wasallam from the Prophet sallallahu that he says, "You call only sahib al Quran." So this is the permissibility of utilizing the terminology. Sahib Qur'an, companion of the Qur'an. Here the Prophet it will be said, li sahib al-Qur'an, to the one who have taken the Qur'an as a companion. Yawm al-Qiyamah, on the day of resurrection. Iqra, waraqa, takun manzalatuka, anda akira ayata taqra'uha. It will be said, recite, and extend, okay, 
in your place where you where you where you last recite the last verse that you recite is going to be the place you're going to be at. So imagine if an individual had memorized the entire Quran, understood the Quran, okay, had become a sahib of all the kulusor of the entire Quran. That individual, by the time he gets to Naz, imagine where he's going to be at. Imagine where she's going to be at. You're going to be elevating as you're reciting. And where the last ayat you stop at, that's your menzala. That will be your station. Okay? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned this tremendous hadith. So, Al-Qur'an al-Sadiqun yubadilu hala sahibuhu min hala ila hal. Another characteristic of the companionship that the Qur'an has that you will not find in someone else. And I want you to pay attention to this. It's important. Because the Qur'an is a friend that exchange the condition of its companion to a, another condition. Meaning it takes it from one state to another state. And nine times out of ten, it's not going to take you to a worse state than the state that you are. It's going to take you to a better state. So one of the, the characteristics of a friend is that it's going to help you progress. Help you elevate. I mean, elevate, help you grow. You're going to see progression. Do you understand? And that's what the Quran does. You're not going to find anyone else that have a companionship like that. It's going to take you from one condition or one state to another state. The, by being a friend of the Quran or the Quran being a friend to you, it is going to take you by the hand. It's going to take you from what? From a state of grief sadness to a state of delight and happiness and most people when they think of happiness when they think of uh, obtaining some type of happiness they think of the fulfillment of one's desires all right to obtain happiness sometimes we, we place that on the fulfillment of the desires how we can be the you, you understand what we can desire but we have to understand that certain desires are not warranted those certain desires which aren't warranted and that are dispraiseworthy in and of themselves, we have to learn how to dissociate ourselves from them type of desires to bring us about happiness, which are temporary um, reliefs. But we do want those type of desires which will be everlasting, those type of desires that we should associate ourselves with that connect us with having true happiness. I can have that mashrutun bi husnu musahada. However, this is the stipulation. Okay? with having a good companion, okay? And what is that stipulation? That that companion takes you from one state to another state. That that companion takes you from one state to another state. A state that is better than the current state that you're in. That's one of the things that you want to have in the front. Now, there are certain things from you that you need to have in order to have the Quran as your friend. In order to maximize from this benefit and these characteristics, all right, then you have to have certain things with you in order to get that from the Quran. And from them is the first and foremost, you have to have sincerity. Your ikhlas have to be for Allah Jalla wa'ala. And you have to be willing to contemplate on what is being said in the book of Allah. And understand in the book of Allah, you can understand about three routes, okay? You can understand the book of Allah by just understanding the al -fad, the wordings themselves, meaning the, the wording, okay? If Allah Jalla wa Ala says for Al-Hakim, you will study Al-Hakim. If, if Allah Jalla wa Ala says, you know, um, Al-Ali, then you will study Al-Ali. This is Al-Fraud. Al I mean, um, Al-Fraud, which is a plural for love. All right? Sheikh Udiyan explained this, that a person can study the Quran by just understanding the meanings of the wordings itself. Then the next marhala is studying the Quran by understanding the ma'ani. Now, to understand the ma'ani is to understand tafsir, all right? The, the tafsir of, yani, and just of what is being said, the jumla and this sentence and so forth, okay? All right? <clears throat> so, you have to be willing to contemplate over the book of Allah and what it contains. And the result of that, of that contemplation, because you can't reach this next stage, which is this last stage, you can't begin to do the acts or work by the Quran without some type of contemplation. And I want you to pay attention to this point here. Now, you're going to really think, now know that your, okay, that know that your condition or your state before you have taken the Quran as a friend or a companion 
it, it would never be the same after you have taken it as a friend. So in other words, the condition that you were in before you actually took the Quran as a friend, okay, and as a companion, is not going to be the same after that. It's going to get better. It's going to improve. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. Let's just take a look at his life here. We can see how the Messenger was before revelation came, before he had the Quran, what was his condition, and we can see how his condition was after he had the Quran. Allah Jalla says, uh, Allah Jalla Allah says in this verse, according to that which we have revealed unto you of this Quran, and you were before that heedless. You were before that from those who were what? Heedless. So his state before the state of the actual revelation reaching him was different than after the revelation reached him. This is the point that is being made here. Yep, all right. <clears throat> so the Sheikh, he mentions that... He says, look at how uh, the Prophet ﷺ condition was affected after the revealing of the Qur'an or after the Qur'an was sent down to him. And he says, <clears throat> rather look at what was even more amazing than that was the condition of the Prophet ﷺ after he was commissioned to be a messenger. When he will uh, do muraja, when he will review <coughs> the Quran with Jibril alayhi salatu wa salam. كَيْفِ يَكُونَ أَجْوَدُ بِالْخَيْرِ مِنَ الرِّحَ الْمُرَّسَلَةِ كَمَا فِي الْبُخَارِ And look how أَجْوَلْ بِالْخَيْرِ How he was so generous with good. يعني من الريح المرسلة كما في البخاري as a state in Bukhari هذا وهو رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي كم ولا يعني يقينه وإيمانه that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what? <clears throat> I mentioned here that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that what? That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the one who had completed his, his, uh, yani kamala, his, 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 his conviction, his yaqeen was actually, uh, was completed in his iman. And even along with that, يَتَأَثَرُ بِالْقُرْآنِ فَيَزْدَادُ نَشَاطُهُ فِي الْقَيْءِ So, even along with that, he was affected by the Qur'an by wanting to increase his nashat, yani his his, his um, high aspiration, okay, to do good. So the Qur'an يعني, instilled in the Prophet ﷺ even more to want to be doing good, to want to do better, and so forth. What campaign you can have better than this? What friendship you can have better than this? And sometimes we don't know how to look at what we should look at in a friend. Who is a friend, who isn't a friend, what we consider to be friends or not. The best companionship that you can have is the Book of Allah. And unfortunately, many of us the Qur'an is not our friend. And we are in the friends of, of the Book of Allah. We have not taken that as a companion, so we don't benefit from it. And it doesn't be our guide, and it doesn't be our, and, and our conditions doesn't change or improve. Because a friend is someone who does not worry about what, you can, what, what they can benefit from you. They're worrying about your benefit. They're worrying about your benefit for dunya wa for akhirah. They're worrying about your spiritual benefit, your spiritual state, as well as your physical state. And they weren't about how to help you improve both. Do you understand? This is one of a friend. They're going to help you go for one condition, which is only the Quran. Finally, we see that that's what it does. So, uh, the Sheikh Kutin said, فَكَيْفَ بِنُفُوسِنَا دَعِيفَ مُحْتَاجَ إِلَى دَوَامُ الْعَلَاقَةِ مَعَ هَذَا Quran." So, he's saying, look how ourselves, our weak selves, are in, in severe need of constantly having a connection with this book, with the Qur'an. He said, So now he's going to break down to us, how do we begin to develop a friendship or companionship with the Qur'an? How do that happen? How do you develop a friendship or companionship with the Qur'an? How do you take it as a sahib so that it can become your musahaba? Okay, so you can have this companionship with the Prophet ﷺ. All right? Uh, he says, one of the ways that you develop is this, is that you have to begin to read the book of Allah. All right? You have to begin to read the book of Allah. This is something that you should do on a constant basis. And I'm going to explain something to you. If you want to do something consistently, all right? Uh, if you want to be persistent in a act, a right? No matter how small or large it is, then you must remember there are stages to get to that. One, you have to have a clause. 
the aniyah had to be pure, okay? But you have to have ikhlas, all right? So that consistency can actually stay. You have to have sincerity. Then you start with that which is much easier for you to do. I'm going to give you an example, for example. An individual wants to start praying night prayer, all right? And we know that night prayer is one of the best actions for the righteous people. But an individual begins to say, I want to pray night prayer, and I want to perform night prayer. So he starts off, or she starts off, performing 11 rakats, okay? Or nine rakats, or seven rakats. So they do it for the first day, they do it for the second day, and then the third day, they miss him. The fourth day, they miss him. The fifth day, they miss him. All right? They shot they load, and they couldn't be consistent with the night prayer each night because they didn't already shot they load, and they didn't take a time to be consistent. Now, this is mentioned in the Book of Wudu, uh, and the Sahih Bukhari, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, do not be like so-and-so who prayed the night prayer one night, then prayed the next night, and then the third night he's missing, and then the fourth night he's missing. All right? In other words, you should train yourself. They call it itadun nafs. You should train yourself. And the best way to train yourself is how Mu'awiyah ibn Hakim Abi Sufyan, um, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, the noble companion, what he would used to do he used to perform one with her. You hear me? He used to perform one rakah, one unit of prayer, for one year straight. Not that he didn't have the ability to do nine, eleven, etc. But he used hikmah. And look how this wisdom actually helped him. He trained his soul to come accustomed to performing one unit of prayer for a year straight, which professed to his sincerity. So if he wanted to increase after that year, two more rakahs to that one, that become three. All right? Uh, if he wanted to increase, say, for example, four more rakahs to that one, that become five. You understand? He is able to do it now with ease because his soul is accustomed to what? Performing that prayer. So if you want to be consistent in doing something, then you start with what's easy for you. And you maintain that ease. Whether it's for six months, whether it's for a year, this is how you're going to build yourself up to be having that stamina that you need to continue to do that. And you're going to have to do that with the book of Allah. So you're going to take your time. Instead of you saying, I'm going to read Baqarah today, I'm going to finish the entire Baqarah, which is the longest story in the Quran, which got two and a half juts, right? Instead of you saying, I'm going to read 20 pages, which is in one juts. So it costs about 40 pages and a half, all right? Instead of you saying, I'm going to read that in all one day, and you know you haven't been reading the Quran you know, since last Ramadan, you probably grazed do it, but you probably haven't read, read the Quran entirely. And it's ayyib upon all of us that we don't finish the Quran at least once a month. That's ayyib. We're not saying it's wajib, but it's ayyib. It's still a, a blemish because if we got to wait to every year that Allah subhanahu wa blesses to get to Ramadan and we still don't complete the Quran even in Ramadan, how much more so it is that we don't read the entire Quran one month? First man ibn Affan, the noble Khalifa, what did he say? He said, I do not let a day go by except that I graze in the book of Allah. Jalla and he was a hafiz himself, by the way. He memorized the entire book of Allah. But still, he said, I does not let one day go by except that I look and I graze and I read inside the book of Allah. This is not our hab. So you can't begin to say that the book is your friend. All right? You want to take the book as your friend? You got to constantly read it. So start off with it's easy for you. If you want to read just one, meaning five verses a day, take set aside a time. You see, well, no, every time during this time, we're going to spend about 10 to 20 minutes reading the Quran every day. And you're going to be consistent and build a, build the consistency with just reading five verses every day. And once you do that, you're going to see you start to increase and you're going to start to improve. And if you don't believe me, if you accustom yourself to reading the Quran, your thought process will change if you start understanding what you're reading. So you're going to need other things to help you. We might not be strong in Arabic, okay? That's all good. But we have a lot of tafsir. So those five verses that you read for 10 minutes, that it takes you to read those five verses, take another 10 minutes to complete the 20 minutes and read the tafsir to those verses. And watch how your thought process begins to start changing. Watch how it starts to affect you. Because that's one of the remnants and the benefits of the Quran itself. So to take it as a companion, this is what happened, all right? You want a friend that you can benefit from, all right? And when I'm talking about benefit, I'm not talking about he give me this or she give me this or I get the he, he, gag, gag, and we get to do this and it seems like we did all this dirt together. I'm not talking about that. That's like, that's nothing. 
I'm talking about some real friendship, a friendship where you can get a benefit that's going to last, that's going to actually increase you. So he says here, the, the, the shaykh continues, he says, so he says you're not going to find a better path that's going to take you and guide you to the Quran more virtuous than the Quran nor is you going to find anything that's going to affect, with, affect you within yourself okay and that's going, to, that's going to touch every part of your conditions other than the speech of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Alright, so he says you don't have you don't have to search for anything other than the Quran in help in order to read it. in order to aid you upon reciting the Quran. Just look into the statement of Allah Jalla wa Ala when he says this is what he said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and thus have we have revealed unto you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the ruhan okay ruhan min amrina we have revealed unto you the message the essence of our command ma kunta tadri mal kitab wala al iman which shows that what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not know what the book was before revelation came to him nor did he know what iman was before revelation came to him However, we have made it, meaning the book of Allah, a light whereby we guide whomsoever we will with it from our servants. And rally you, O Muhammad, you guide to the straight path. Alright? So the shaky comments on this verse, he says. When Allah says, however, we have made it a light, meaning that the Quran is your guide, a specific guide throughout your entire life, which will guide you to the straight path, that which you do not, the, the big path, alladhi tabhathu an, that straight path that you have to search for and look for, the Quran will be your guide. Al Quran huwa ilajul fa'alu li kulli ma yusibu And this is extremely important. How many friends are you going to find that's going to help you with all of your different types of illnesses? That you have, that you suffer from. All right. So illnesses are divided into two kinds. You have the illnesses, what they call the marad, uh, uh, marad al jasad, the the illnesses of the body, and then you have the illnesses, what they call the marad al qalb. All right, and marad al qulub. Okay, the illnesses of the heart. All right. Now, one small one fell falls under the falls under what we call the spiritual essence or the spiritual realm, and one fell, falls under the physical realm. Okay. So. <clears throat> Now, the spiritual realm is more important than the physical realm, okay? You can be sick physically, right, and be able to recover, okay? But if you're sick within the heart, you might need not be able to recover. Do you understand what I mean? And what I'm, I'm going to explain what that means. I'll give you an example. Ship. If a person has the illness of ship, all right, and he or she dies with that illness, that they never recovered from shirk. They never sought repentance from it. They never returned from it. Look at what's going to happen. Allah Jalla says, Inna Allah la yakfiru an yushraka bihi wa yakfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Al-Ayat. Allah says this twice in his book, in the same surah. All right? It comes twice in the same surah in two different occasions. Allah Jalla says, in Surah Tanisa, He says, Indeed Allah Jalla does not forgive that a person commits shirk with him. Okay? That he strive anything to Allah Jalla wa Ala, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But He forgives anything lesser than that. And the ulama they debate. It's not the time to go over that about that ayah and the details of the ayah. And this is how we understand major, uh, major versus minor shirk, etc., etc. Type. One of the things you have to understand is that what's going to happen if a person doesn't recover from the illness of shirk? This is what's going to happen. Allah says in another verse in Surah Ma'idah, He says, "Inna hu man yushrik billahi faqad hafram Allah alayhi al there are three things that will happen to a person if they die upon shirk. And I want you to pay attention to this. Allah says, Rally he who commit partners with Allah. Alright? They will be prohibited to enter paradise. Period. Alright? There's no getting around it. There's no way around it ever. Allah says he's going to prevent them from entering into paradise. Okay? They're not going to get in. The entrance is blocked. Alright? 
The second thing, there a bull is going to be the fire. All right? Where they will buy in there forever. The third thing is that their actions will be null and void. So any good that you think that they put forth is actually going to be what? Like Allah says in Surah Fort Khan, it's going to be like scattered winds. All right? It's going to be like what? Scattered winds. So it's important to understand that. The horns of illnesses of the heart is grave and worse than the horns of illness of the body. Okay, you are able to recover from a, phys a physical illness and still be able to make it into paradise by the permission of Allah, right? But if you don't recover from certain illnesses of the heart, you're not going to recover, period. Such as innovations and other illness of the heart. So these are some of the things you want to take in mind. But the Quran, what does it do? The Quran serves as that It is that treatment which is used to uh, uh, treat every calamity which befalls your heart. You know, understand? So, any illnesses that you have in your heart, you don't go see a doctor. Yeah, I mean, a physician. You don't say that. You see a different type of doctor. And, you know, as uh, Ibn Qayyim famously says in his, his beautiful poem, which is al um Ibn Qayyim, he mentions in that poem about the Quran and the Sunnah being the cure. And that the person who administered that cure is none, none other than the uh, Alam al-Rabbani, the well-versed and the, the scholar who is a Rabbani who can actually apply those things. So that would be more, more so like your doctor in that case to apply what is both in the book of Allah and the Sunnah. So it helps you and aids you with those problems that you have with your heart. Where do you think anxiety comes from? What, what seat do you think that falls under? Where do you think heaven, sadness, grief? Depression, where do you think that falls at? Where do you think that's at? Where do you think it emanates from? Okay? You have to pay attention now. All of these different things that you feel on a regular basis, that when you up and you down and you feel disoriented or you feel dissociated or you feel isolated or you feel, um, you know, confused or you feel uh, like, like, like you, 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 you're under so much pressure or you feel tense. Where do you think all of that comes from? Because in Islam, the akro seat is the heart. It's not the, the, the it's not it's not the brain, all right. It's the heart. So if that's the case, then the Quran is the best friend to have to aid you in that endeavor. It's going to help you get rid of those illnesses and to treat those illnesses. Well, it's the Quran that the Dawa must know. Allah did not do on the treatment of the disease. فأصل بعض إنه يتقطع إلى مرحلة أقوى مما كنت عليها قبل بداية الرحلة الشفاء. Would you pay attention to this now? The Quran. Okay, it's not like the treatment or the cure of medicine, like how you use for when you want to treat someone who is sick physically. All right, rather, what happens is you will find that the Quran, uh, its cure and its treatment is way stronger because it makes you better than what you were before you begin your tra or your journey to actually do what to become uh, to your journey to heal to be in healing. The Quran actually gives you something way better than that. If you if you want to see, you can look at the statement of Allah Jalla when He says, "Ya yuhannasu qad ja'atkum mawidatun min Rabbikum wa shifa." He says, Allah Jalla Wala says in this beautiful verse, addressing all mankind, not just the believers, but believers, non-believers alike, wicked, uh, wickers and righteous, all alike. Allah Jalla Wala says in this verse, "O people, indeed there comes to you a mawidha, an exhortation, an admonition from your Lord." And a healing for what is contained inside your breast, your hearts. And is a guidance and a mercy for those who believe. Now, what will keep you, uh, your heart hardening? Uh, and it will increase that hardness to happen with your heart. So one thing you need to know that the Quran works as a means to soften your heart. And if your heart isn't softened, brothers and sisters, you got, you're in for a rude awakening. If your heart is hard, then people heart that are hard, their hearts most likely are black. And if their hearts most likely are black, it's either due to actually we know for the sins from sins. And there are the people who really don't care too much about morality. The other people really doesn't care too much about anyone. In that regards, and they are the ones who are the most foremost in being Muslim, criminals, etc., etc., as the Quran relate to us. So, 
the thing that's going to increase a person in that hardness is distancing oneself and how and to the extent that you distance yourself from the speech of your Lord is it's going to be the extent of that increase that increasement will take as far as your heart being uh, hard. And the Sheikh he mentioned for that reason you will not find a way, okay? A way that another way which will cause the heart to be soft and increase it in its humility, except the the route of reciting the book of the uh, reciting the Quran and reflecting and contemplating upon the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says, "Alam yatni lil ladina amanu an takshaa kulubuhum lidhikrillah, wa ma nazla min al haqi wa la yakunu kal ladina utu al kitab min qabl, fa taala alayhim aman, fa qasat kulubuhum." So pay attention to this verse. Allah Jalla wa Ali says, "Has it not come a time for the believers that their heart should tremble?" The heart should have fear from the remembrance of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Wa ma nazla min al haqq. All right, and that which has been sent down from the truth. Wa la yakunu, and that you do not be like those who have been given the book from the Jews and the Christians from before. For taala alayhim amad. The time period had become long for them. All right, for qasat kulubhum, and their hearts had became hard. So the Sheikh he says, for either taala am wazad al bur qasat. Uh, 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 he says, so these two things shows you the means of where your heart become hard. When the time period become long and, you, uh, and, and the, the, the distance from the speech of Allah Jalla wa Ala is, is, is increased, then a person's heart is wasn't it. So we're going to get ready to end this, inshallah ta'ala, with some of the things that can help you um, with the taking the Quran or developing a friendship with the Quran. We mentioned one of them, reading the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Reciting also and con I mean contemplating also is another means of getting to that. So, <clears throat> from the things that you can do, and we said this earlier, is that you can pick out a certain time of the day to read the Book of Allah. All right, and I'm going to even go a step further here. It is a sign of your iman. Okay, now iman is a part of being a mu'min. Everybody want to scream out how much they are a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. First of all, we don't say we are a believer without saying inshallah, because there are many things that we. Uh, fall short in, in regards to our own iman or even understanding the issue of iman. But nevertheless, many people claim to be believers and all of us, you know, we, 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 you know I'm a believer, I'm a believer, I'm a believer, right? So, a believer does not let one day go by except that he read the book of Allah. Period. The believer allows the book of Allah to be its guide. You understand? He or she is guided by the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala. The believer does this. Allah Jalla wa Ala laid them out. Five characteristics of the believers and what surah? In surah Baqarah in the beginning. Allah laid out the characteristics of the believer in surah Mu'minun, surah 23. Allah laid out the characteristics of the believer. So when you want to say you are a believer, then you start checking your actions in regards to those characteristics. And if those characteristics is not seen in you, then it's not there. And you're definitely not on that path if you're not reading contemplating the book of Allah. You understand what I'm saying? You say, well, but I pray. Okay. All right. If you pray, there are many different parts of the prayer. There's, an, um, there's a physical aspect to the prayer, then there's a, a spiritual aspect to the prayer. And that's what you have to learn about the deen. The deen covers both parts. All right. Just like fasting. There's a physical fast and there's a spiritual fast. Many people physically fast, but they don't benefit spiritually. And the Prophet ﷺ tells you those things that which is... Um, uh, and that is not his seat, they still affect your fast, like backbiting, okay, frivolous speech, vain speech, cursing, and all these different things. That got nothing to do physically, that have something to do spiritually. You understand? So those things still affect your fast. So the best fast is to do is the spiritual coupled with the physical, all right? So that you're able to do it. So anyway, I'm saying you always want to have these two elements. So that's the point I'm trying to explain. You always want to have these two elements. So if you want to be someone who actually benefits as and, and, and want to take the Quran and develop a relationship with the Quran, it's not going to happen overnight. Get it out your head. You're not going to, just because you heard this talk, all of a sudden now you're going to be the best expert on reading the book of Allah. That's not what I, it's not, no one is expecting you from that. Allah Jalla wa Ala don't expect that. The Prophet himself doesn't expect that. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Allah Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much as you are able. The Prophet Wasallam said what? Ma umiratum bihi. That which whatever I have command you with, he says, do much of you are able. Do you understand? This is the condition of istita'ah, according to your capability. When it comes to the prohibitions, though, that istita'ah is not there. 
You're supposed to leave that off, period. But when it comes to doing the actual acts, then it's going to be based upon your capability. So you don't have to worry about trying to ga gain everything in one day. It's not going to happen. But what you need to start doing, begin to develop a relationship with the best friend you're going to have that's not going to backbite you, that's not going to backstab you, that's not going to mistreat you, that's not going to speak about you in different private uh, parts and uh, di uh, um, diverge your secrets, uh, turn against you, uh, conspire against you, spread tells about you, let you down. This is the type of friend you never have to worry about that's going to do any one of those things. Do you not understand that? Rather, this friend is going to make intercession for you, as the Prophet Muhammad mentioned, that the those who recite or uh, have the Surah Mulk, and he recites Surah Mulk, and they understand it, as the early man mentioned, and they try to implement uh, to the best of their abilities. On the day of judgment, it will come as a intercessor, uh, a shafi, an intercessor on behalf of the Sahib of Surah Mulk. And that's just a portion, a Surah from the Quran. Imagine being a Sahib to the whole entire Quran. A companion to the whole entire Quran. So you can see that there is nothing that's going to be like that. This is a friend you want to have. The other friends we got, wait, they come and go. One minute they cool with you, next minute they not. You have a fallout about some money. You didn't get no money back. I have a fallout because they liked the one person. You liked the same person. This happened, that happened. You have a fallout because this, this, and that. And then it's just friction. And then some relationships never mend. Because then a person died before they can ever apologize, or another person can apologize, or they ever can uh, fix up or patch up the situation, and this is happening. These, this, that type of friendship is not the friendship you want to go crazy for. This is the friendship that's going to follow you in the grave. You know that the, the, the Quran, when you're left, your recitation of the Quran is from your armor. You not understand that's from your actions. So your friend in this world can't follow you in the grave. All right? They might marry your wife after you're gone. Okay, they might take your wealth or whatever the case may be after you're gone. That's, that's possible, all right? But the Qur'an is from your amal. The recitation of the Qur'an is from your amal. That's from your action. So that reward from that recitation is going to be with you because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu confirmed that in the grave, you're not going to have nothing with you except your amal, your actions. So if you ain't going to have nothing with you except your actions, don't you not want that? So the Qur'an is going to follow you in the grave. That's basically the point I'm trying to say. And then not only is that, it's going to follow you in the resurrection. As we brought the hadith, then the resurrection, you know, you're going to recite, you go up also, that it's going to intercede on behalf of the person, et cetera, et cetera. So this Quran is going to follow you both in this life and the next. What better friend to have than that? I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, logically, there's no better friend than that that's going to be with you in this life, the grave, and the next life. You understand what I'm saying? So this is the book that you want to have as your friend. And this is what the Sheikh is pretty much saying here. And that's why he says that, uh, He says, and he mentioned a good point here. He says that as for what has been reported about the Quran itself, he says, no, that, Know that the one who loves something, they're not going to abandon the speech of their beloved. Okay. So if you profess to love this female or to profess to love that man, you're not going to just disregard or discard what that man say if that's your beloved. You want to know what that person says. Same thing with Allah. So if you claim to love Allah, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attached his love to Amr. No one in the world can claim that they love Allah yani verbally without it being attached to Amr. And that Amr has been laid out. Allah jalla wa'ala says, Kul, say, O Muhammad, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni. So then it became a condition. And I need, I need to understand this ayah. Maybe one day I'll go into the tafsir of this ayah and show you why the spirit of man called this ayah the ayah to the imtihan, the ayah of uh, examination. And it's to test our iman. It's to test our love that we profess for Allah because Allah made it a condition. He says, Kul in kuntum. It's become a sharp right here, a condition. So now if something must be fulfilled or met, the condition must be filled or met in order to require or receive this love. Allah says, say, O Muhammad, if you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Alright, this is why it's مَجْزُوم فَاتَّبِعُونِي becomes a command. Then follow me. So a part of the prerequisite or the conditions to ascertain Allah's love, you have to follow Muhammad. Period. You have to follow Muhammad There's no way you can love Allah by saying I just follow the Quran and I don't follow the Prophet Period. That's not possible. The Quran actually negates that. You'll be contradicting the actual ayat itself. Follow me. 
Then Allah says, Allah. Now pay attention. Allah now drops the fact that you can receive his love after following the one that he commissioned. The Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we see that all of this proves to what? Allah's love is connected to amal, to actions. So you have to produce actions. And for those who don't know, love, even in English, is a verb. All right? <laughs> It's an action verb. It's not something that we just do verbally. We just say, I love a person. Yeah, I love you. But there's no actions behind it. It's just empty words. No. Love produce actions. Do you not understand that? So when you say that you love Allah, then you should not abandon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech. You should read it. Tayyip, last but not least, he said, istima' al Quran. So how do you do this? How do a person reach the level of reflecting, contemplating? He said that this person should begin to listen to the Quran. Listen. Allah Jalla says, Wa inna fi dhalika dhikra liman qablahu al awqa sam'a wa huwa shaheed. Allah says in Surah Al Qaf, He says that indeed this is a reminder for whom? Who is this reminder going to, who is it going to affect? This reminder is going to affect the one who has a qalb. Okay? Not just a heart, but that one has an understanding, an aql. This one who has a qalb. And that they have an attentive ear, that the ear are listening to benefit, not listen to argue, not listen to be skeptical, not listen to debate, but listening to actually benefit. So they are perking up both their heart and their ears to say, okay, what is Allah Jalla Wa'ala commanding me to do now? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibiting me from now? What benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? This is how they are approaching the actual message. Do you not understand? So this becomes clear there. So that's why he says, استِمَعَ لِلْقُرْآنِ Listen to the Qur'an. بِنَاوَ عَلَى مَا سَبَكَ فَمِنَ وَاجِبْ عَلَيْنَا تَقَرُّ بِنَا قُرْآنِ وَمَدَاوَمَا عَلَى كِرَاءَةِ بِتَدَبَّرٍ مُحِدَّ عَيَاتِهِ وَعَمَلَ بِهَا فَهَذَا مَا يَنْفَعَنَا فِي دِينِنَا وَدُنْيَنَا وَهُوَ مَا يَجْعَوْنَا نَرْكَ عَلَى دَرَجَاتِ الْجَنَّةِ uh, a closeness to the Qur'an, this relationship, and this consistency with reciting the Qur'an, contemplating over it, and also memorizing its verses, acting according to it. And if we do these stages and or these steps, then this is what's going to benefit us in our life, in this life, as well in the next. And it will be that means that will uh, 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 make us يعني, extend to the highest level uh, in paradise, be in Allah. Whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation today was definitely for myself. And the shaitan, whatever we said is correct from Allah. I just want to uh, uh, advise us all we can begin to take baby steps. All right? You don't have to move to nobody paces. So tell yourself that you want to set a time, 10 minutes. That's all. You want to set 10 minutes to the side and start beginning to read the Quran. All right? Read an ayah of the Quran. Don't say you're Muslim and you don't read the book of Allah. Okay? Don't do that. You want to read the book of Allah every day. That's your goal. That's your goal. Is to read the book of Allah every day. Don't worry about saying I'm going to complete the book of Allah in 15 days or 18 days or 20 days or 30 days. Don't worry about that. That's too big of a goal right now. Let's start with the baby steps. Say I'm going to read every day 10 minutes. And to help me understand what I read, I'm going to get a basic tafsir and I'm going to read that for the next 10 minutes. And then... Build on that. And that's how you're going to begin. And then maintain your prayers. Remember, sometimes we make all of our prayers. And for those who are continuing making all of our prayers, may Allah Jalla Ali words and keep us uh, uh, um, firm on that. But if we're making all of our prayers consistently, then that means we must be moving to the next level. And the next level is Iman. Okay, there are three levels to the deen. The next level is Iman. Iman will require to you to do the supererogatory prayers. All right, like the Sunnah Mu'akidah. Etc. Etc. So if you're doing the five prayers already, and that's no problem for you, no hassle, no big, then you should be doing the supererogatory prayers with it. But if you're struggling with the first part, which is maintaining those five, then you need to hone in on that. All right, and you already know yourself where you fall short in that, whether it be fudge or whether it be this, whether it be that. You need to try to build yourself up to be consistent to make those prayers fabric. Then worry about the extra. This is how many people with innovation they miss things. They don't worry about the primary acts. They worry about the subsidiary acts. So they're worrying about doing the acts of additional things instead of worrying about locking in the foundation. And that is we lock down our prayer. 
So once you lock down your prayer, you read some of the Quran, you begin to build yourself better. Do you understand? And once that starts to happen, you can start seeing some results. So this goes out to all of us, inshallah, to all that try to take the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a friend, because it will be with us in this life, it will be with us in our grave, and it will be with us in, and when I say with us, I mean that the actions of our recitation and the reward of that will be with us in our grave. I'm not saying the physical Quran will be with you. I don't want to misconstrue that either. Um, but, uh, and it also will be, inshallah ta'ala, intercessor for us. And to suffer for us on the day of, on, on the day of resurrection, inshallah. Subhanakallahumdi hamdi ashadu ala 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 ala